Greetings, everyone. This is Jeff Wilkerson, professor of physics at Luther College, bringing you the next in our series of what to look for in the night sky. We're talking about the week of January 9th, 2023, this time around. So let's start talking about the moon. Uh, the moon's big and bright this week. It starts near full, a little bit less than full, and it wanes uh, throughout the week. And then we're going to talk about geometry. We like to talk about geometry a lot, and I know you're tired of it. Uh, but we'll talk about geometry just a little bit more and some of the, 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 the zodiacal constellations that are out there. Um, so anyway, early in the week, early-ish in the week, the evening of the 9th into the morning of the 10th, Monday into Tuesday, the moon will be sitting above Regulus. And it will start, uh, it's going to close the gap on Regulus. It'll be about 5 degrees. Remember, we always talk about uh, 5 degrees being about half of your fist width held out at arm's length. It's going to be about five degrees from Regulus. It'll be closing that gap down as the night wears on. Regulus is the biggest, brightest star in Leo. And so it's close to this, uh, this star in Regulus, uh, in Leo, this big, bright star. It uh, should be a nice pair. about 90% full on that night. Uh, we, we move forward toward the end of the week, the evening of the 14th into the morning of the 15th. Uh, we're talking about Saturday into Sunday morning. And it's near Spica in Virgo. And it's about five degrees again. It will be pulling away from Spica as the night wears on. So it'll be closer earlier in the night. But it will come up later. You won't be able to see it all night. You'll be able to see this pretty much all night. Uh, wait an hour after dark and you've got it the rest of the night. Uh, at about 50% full, just under half full on this night, uh, the moon's not going to come up. We, we, we'd say, okay, this is a third quarter moon. And the third quarter moon's not going to rise until about midnight. Uh, typically speaking, that'll vary a little bit on your local time, depending on how your clock is set relative to uh, actual true noon where you are. But it's going to come up about midnight and be up for the rest of the morning. So you really won't see it much on the evening of the 14th, but in, in the morning of the 15th. And so once it rises, it'll be moving away from Spica for the rest of, of the night. And you might be able to. It's a fun little exercise. We like, we like fun little projects, right? And so you might be able to w notice that separation growing if you're just... You're like, hey, what the heck? I'm going to go out at midnight, and I'm going to start looking at the moon, and I'm just going to watch the moon until it gets too light to see Spica and the moon at, at 6 in the morning or, or whatever that happens to be. And over that six hours, I'm just going to take some pictures with my cell phone, or I'm going to make some sketches in a notepad, or I'm just going to enjoy the view. And I bet if you did that, if you had a, had a thermos of coffee and, and, and whatever else, uh, donuts, let's say, and you wanted to watch that separation grow, you would appreciate how much that separation grew over that six hours. So there you go. It's something you could try. You would see it even more here uh, with uh, the uh, regulars earlier in the, in, in the month because you can stay up all night, earlier in the week. Uh, you can stay up all night watching it. You can go out right after dark. So a anyway, uh, but what I want to think about now is... You, the moon is tracking through these zodiacal constellations, and the, the constellations of the zodiac are there because these are constellations that the sun tracks through. Uh, and, and, and since these things were made, uh, this, the precession of the Earth, the wobble of the Earth's orbit has caused where the, moon, the sun tracks to change and when it's there uh, a little bit. Uh, but we won't talk about that in this particular video. We can, we have, there's one out there someplace you can, you can look at if you want to. Uh, and, and learn a little bit more about that. Maybe we'll swing back to it uh, in a week or two, or a year or two, or, or, or a decade or two. Who knows? Uh, but anyway, what's going on here is the solar system is largely a flattened disk. It's not a perfectly flattened disk, uh, but it's largely a flattened disk. And so you got this flat disk, and the path of the sun through the sky, here's the Earth. Hey, I got an Earth right here. Here's the Earth. And as the Earth orbits the sun, the sun is here, and the Earth is orbiting the sun. The sun traces a path across the sky. We call that the ecliptic. Uh, we call the plane of the solar system the ecliptic as well. But that's the, the same thing, really, geometrically, just depending on whether you're looking from the sun, whether you're looking from the Earth. As we look from the Earth here, you see the sun tracking through the sky, and it tracks through these constellations like Leo and Virgo. And so as it tracks through Leo and Virgo, the, the planets go through there too. Right now, Mars is in Taurus. And so you can see Mars and Taurus, for example, and, and shining, shining beautifully, mostly, most all night long uh, right now. And so you see Mars in another zodiacal constellation because it's in that flat plane of the solar system. Now, not everything. Comets, for example, come in at all kinds of weird angles and, 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 and really pay no attention to what that path of the sun is through the sky or our orbit around the sun. 
uh, the apparent path of the sun through the sky. Uh, but the planets do, largely, except that they're tilted. We talk about inclination of their orbit just a little bit, and the moon. The moon is just a few degrees, it's six degrees or something. The moon, the moon is its inclination of the moon's orbit relative to the ecliptic. So the moon doesn't follow the sun's path exactly. Sometimes it's above it and sometimes it's below it, but it's near it. And same for the planets. It's exactly the same for the planets. Uh, they're pretty pretty much in that flattened plane of the sun. They don't they don't tilt as much as the as much as the moon does from our, our vantage point. We don't see them uh, deviate from the ecliptic as much, both because of the angle of inclination and because the moon's so close to us. But anyway, that's what's going on here. Now we know we're going to tell, let's talk about just a little bit more uh, to say uh, we, we, we're thinking about geometry for those of us in, in in the northern hemisphere here. So here we are in the northern hemisphere. Uh, when we're tilted away, now we're going to make the sun over here. And when we're tilted away from the sun, it's winter time. And when we're tilted toward the sun, let's orbit around over to the other side of the sun. We're tilted toward the sun. It's summertime. Now, when it's summertime, we see night over on that side. So sun here, earth, night. Now, we've talked before. We don't want to get too hung up on this because the earth rotates enough in one night that we can see a big chunk of sky in one night. That's one of the pleasures of watching the sky is to appreciate just how much of the night sky you can see in any given night. But generally speaking, so midnight, if this is the sun, this is the earth, midnight is straight away from the sun over there. That's where the full moon, the full moon is going to be sitting out here. So the full moon is sitting out here, and so we're going to see the full moon uh, projected over this direction. But we're also going to see the stars, if now we're tilted uh, toward the sun in the northern hemisphere, away from the sun in the southern hemisphere, we're tilted toward the sun in the northern hemisphere, we're going to see this as summertime. Those are the constellations we're going to associate uh, with uh, the night sky in summertime. These are the constellations that are up during the daytime. In summertime. And in fact, that's where the sun is. If you think about, okay, where's the sun? Um, what what constellations are, is the sun passing through in the in the summertime like that? Then you can look at this and you can say, okay, uh, where would those constellations be when we orbit around over here? Where would those constellations be? They're going to be relatively high in the sky. All right, the equator is here, down here. We see the sun high in the sky because it's well above the equator in the summertime. That's where those constellations are. So the zodiacal constellations of summertime are higher in the sky than the zodiacal constellations of wintertime. Well, that is to say where the sun is in wintertime. But remember, we see this at night in the opposite, opposite time of the year. So the sun, high in the sky. What constellations of the zodiac are very high in the sky, well above the southern horizon for those of us as far north as I live? You've got... Uh, Taurus that we just talked about, and, and, and Castor and Pollux in Gemini, right here. You got Aldebaran and Mars. You can look at in Taurus. Castor and Pollux, the bright stars in Gemini. So these are well up. These are fairly high in the sky. By the time we look at the night sky, the zodiacal constellations that we can see at night in summertime, Scorpius and Sagittarius, those are lower on the horizon, and that's because the sun is lower on the horizon in wintertime when it's in those constellations. It's it's because of the tilt of the Earth's orbit, but that's how those things. Are related. So you think about that. Go out now and think about uh, Taurus and Gemini and think about how high in the sky they look, how much you can see them up in the south. Uh, check out, they're up, they're up pretty much all night right now. Check out Castor and Pollux, the big bright stars in Gemini. And often I just talk about two strands of stars for the legs of Gemini stretching off of there. Uh, but let's be, more, let's, be, let's be more careful with that right now. As we go down below Pollux over here, you've got uh, Wasat and Mechbuda. And, 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 and down this direction, and you've got um, Mepsuta and Mu and Propus up this direction that curl up this way. And as you get up this way, you've got M35, a nice open star cluster, something worth checking out in binoculars or a telescope up here. So this, this, think about this. This is where the sun will be. The sun's not there now, so we see it at nighttime, up high in the sky at night. Late at night, we see Gemini and Taurus. That's where the sun will be in the summertime, when it's much higher in the sky for those of us at mid-northern latitudes. All of this is reversed for people at southern latitudes, for all of my friends out there uh, at, at southern latitudes. So this is, um, check out Gemini, check out uh, Taurus, and think about this, and think about the moon. As the moon moves from Leo in, so as it starts, it starts the week in Cancer, and, and slides into Leo, and there's, in the region of Cancer in Leo, it's going to be higher in the sky. And it gets lower and lower and lower in the sky. Think about, try to go out and observe it when it's due south. 
uh, which will be for early in the week, that's going to be just after midnight. Uh, late in the week, uh, that's going to be uh, pretty close to dawn, uh, uh, much later in the night. But you can see how much lower it is, how much lower Spica is in the sky than Regulus. And that's as the moon is moving around here. Here we are. Uh, now we're over here. It's wintertime in the northern hemisphere. We're tilted away from the sun. We'll have the sun out here. Uh, and so now the full moon was over here, high in the sky, well above the equator. Remember, the equator's pointed down here. The full moon's up here, high in the sky. And as the moon moves around this direction, it's getting lower and lower and lower in the sky because it's tracking the zodiacal constellations. And the zodiacal constellations are getting close as you get over this direction. I uh, don't have them drawn on the board. I, I do have them here. As you get over this direction, the zodiacal constellations are getting very close to the celestial equator, very close to what's going to be high directly overhead uh, and, and, the, and the vernal equinox. And so, uh, so this, as you see, uh, the moon tracking down lower and lower until the moon is going to get, as the, as the moon wanes even further in the following week, it's going to be getting closer and closer to where the sun is in the sky right now, which is pretty low in the sky. That's more geometry than we meant to do, but it's something for you to think about as you get out and you appreciate the, uh, the view of the moon with Spica and the moon with Regulus and uh, Taurus and Castor and Pollux and Gemini. Have a great week, everybody. I hope you have clear skies, and as always, thanks for watching.